We up right into it, y'all. Let's go. I thank y'all because without y'all being here, I wouldn't be able to have as many views as I have when we just started doing consistent videos less than a month ago, y'all. Less than a month ago, bro. And we already at half a thousand. Come on, y'all. I got y'all to thank for that, man. Clap it up, man. Clap it up, man. And for those who ain't rocking with me, y'all gonna rock with me in the end because that's what niggas do every time. Nobody likes you when you down, but everybody likes you when you up, bro. It's crazy. Watch this. Nobody from nobody from nowhere become somebody. Tune in, y'all. Let's go. Ma'am, ma'am. Look at me. Ma'am. He keeps turning. He keeps turning. Ma'am. I need you to hear this. The next time it happens, there will be a consequence. You understand that? I don't rewatch my videos, so I don't know what the hell this is. The most disturbing case of Bryce Rhodes. True crime. Mr. Rhodes, you're smiling. I don't know why you're smiling. Because I can. Well? Because I can. It's not a crime to smell. The man you just saw on the screen is 25-year-old Bryce Rhodes, displaying despicable behavior and showing no remorse or guilt for his actions. He stands accused of the murder of brothers 14-year-old Larry Ordway and 16-year-old Maurice Gordon, whose bodies were discovered following a disturbing 911 call which tipped off the authorities. They, it looks like they're deceased and they didn't bother. Those are kids. Those are kids. There's some, uh, shit that happened to them. Death penalty. <clears throat> Death penalty. Death penalty. Y'all know how I would do. Twan for president. Death penalty. Let's get these immigrants out of here. Let's lower inflation. Let's protect our country. Twan for president. Let's go. Shoe prints right here, too. When their mother, Elizabeth Wren, received the devastating news, her world crumbled into pieces. But what made the pain even worse was the horrifying way her sons were killed. They were terribly stabbed multiple times in the chest before their bodies were set on fire. It was so gruesome that the police had to prevent Elizabeth from seeing her sons for the last time. But why would anyone do such a horrific thing? According to Bryce, the boys... <coughs> Lost. Danger. Void. Anger. Lost. Numb. I have this power to where, if there is a picture, I can see into people's eyes and see what comes from it. <clears throat> I don't know what it is, but it's called looking into this man's eyes is making me sick. Like, literally. There's something wrong with this dude. He knew a secret of his that could destroy his life. What could that secret be? And why would it lead to... In these eyes, innocent kids. I, I, that's how I know it's like an actual power, bro. Looking into that man's eyes, into that soul, almost made me sick to my stomach. Looking at these eyes right here, these young kids that die, it's gentle, it's warming, it's it's comfortable, you know what I'm saying? We understand that they were kids, you know, just living in the wrong moment. We know that they're going to be okay. But looking at that other dude, bro, that other motherfucker, man, it was sickening looking into his spirit, bro. Such a gruesome end for two young lives. And what drove Bryce to behave so despicably in front of law enforcement? How old is this nigga anyway, bro? Hey, so you want to know where to invest a thousand dollars right now? Well, forget about stocks. Forget about re yo. Let me tell y'all something real quick. <clears throat> y'all need to tell YouTube to stop being fucking biased, bro. I tried to remember our homie X Extasian. I tried to play one of his songs, and they blocked my shit. I looked on the fucking feed. I see somebody else with more views, man. With more subscribers and shit, but he was able to fucking do it. They didn't block his shit. Y'all need to talk to you two about that, man. Five in the show. On May 21st, 2016, a 22-year-old girl was riding her bike past an old abandoned building on the 4,000 block of River Park Drive in the Shawnee neighborhood of West Louisville. But that day was different as something strange caught her eye. The building, which had looked fine the day before, was now all burnt and destroyed. 
She felt curious about what had exactly happened there and decided to investigate further. That was me as a kid, bro. Even now, to this day, I still got a lot of adventure in me, bro. But I would never go into a cave. I'm not doing that shit where niggas find these little holes in the ground and it ends up living to like, leading to like big caverns under the ground. Not doing that. <clears throat> but going on like a still like a kid adventure around the block, being in the neighborhoods you've never been before, streets, back roads, I'm still down for that. Especially if I have a dirt bike. Oh, yeah. On that. Amidst the mess of the burned building, she spotted something strange, a shape that seemed out of place. As she went closer, her heart pounded with fear as she discovered it was a dead body. But the surprises didn't end there. Not far away, she had found another body, and both of them were badly burned. Feeling extremely scared, she quickly called the police for help. Soon enough, the scene was swarming with police officers trying to figure out what mysterious events unfolded there last night. The crime scene was incredibly gruesome, so much so that the police called it the worst they'd ever seen. It was so disturbing that even one of the officers couldn't help but shake his head in disbelief and felt really... <coughs> the one people that could change all this shit are the one people that uses their God for money and greed and fucking whatever the hell they're doing. The one God that can change it all. And they're making a mockery of it. Emotional. Christians have the ability to reverse death. <clears throat> Why? Because Jesus said that they could. But what are Christians doing now? He covered the two dead bodies with a white cloth. The bodies were rushed to the hospital for an autopsy by pathologists. Meanwhile, the rest of the officers stayed behind at the scene, carefully searching for any more clues that could help them in the investigation. After the autopsies, it was revealed that the cause of death wasn't the fire, but something even more sinister. According to a document released from the coroner's office, both boys had suffered severe head injuries from blunt force trauma as well as stab wounds to their chests. What's even more chilling is Keep in mind, these are young boys, y'all. These are kids. ...is that they had already died hours before their bodies were set on fire and left at the scene. Now to begin their murder investigation and gather clues, the police needed to figure out who the boys were and why someone would harm them in such a terrible manner. Despite the bodies being badly burned, the police had a stroke of luck as they managed to create sketches of the boys. These sketches were shared with the public with a plea for anyone who recognized them to come forward and help identify them. But they didn't stop at just sketches. They delved into their records to find any missing persons reports that had been filed some days before and matched the descriptions of the victims. But sadly, they hit a dead end. Days passed, and even though Monday came and went, no one stepped forward to identify the boys. The following day, on May 23, 2016, a worried woman named Elizabeth Wren rushed to the police station. She was visibly anxious as she told the officers the sketches they had released were of her sons, 14-year-old Larry Ordway and 16-year-old Maurice Gordon. Elizabeth 14 and 16. How much you want to bet the father's not in the house? Elizabeth was shocked when the officers delivered the heartbreaking news that her son's bodies had been found completely burned. The police told her that they were suspecting foul play and believed it wasn't just an accident, but rather a carefully planned murder. Elizabeth desperately wanted to see her sons one last time, but the officers had to gently refuse her request. The bodies were in such a horrible state that it wouldn't have been appropriate for a mother to witness. Despite feeling utterly helpless, Elizabeth gathered her strength and shared a crucial piece of information with the police. Elizabeth recounted to the police how on the evening of May 21, 2016, her sons had informed her that they were going out with some friends whom she had never liked. Despite her attempts to prevent her sons from hanging... Doesn't matter if you're black, white, doesn't matter if you're white, it doesn't matter if you're Spanish. You need the father in the house. And I know Spanish moms. I've seen Spanish moms put the fucking smack down on their kids. You understand? 
But with her just being by herself, the kid does what? Goes out with the homies anyway. When a dad lays a smack down, he makes sure everybody understands. This is my son, and he will not be hanging with you gangbanging ass motherfuckers. You understand? I've seen dads do that shit. I've seen dads save their child from fucking gangbanging. I've rarely seen a single mother be able to save her son or daughter from gangbanging, ever. Almost every single gangbanger that's been incarcerated or that's gangbanging now has a single mother. Almost 85 to 90 percent of gangbangers have a single mother. Talk to me nice. Yeah. And those are statistical facts, not just my opinion. Those are actual facts. These friends in the past, they still went ahead. That night, they headed to a party with three individuals. 17-year-old Jackery Taylor, 15-year-old Antoine Carter, and 25-year-old Bryce Rowe. Let's, man, hold up, hold up, back up, nigga. Back up. Back the fuck up, bro. Let's talk about this shit. Let's talk about this shit. Taylor, 15-year-old Antoine Carter, and 20... And fucking 25. When he go to jail, bro, he should come, he should, I can't look at this nigga. Five-year-old Bryce Rhodes. His soul is fucking evil, bro. Um, 15, 17, 25. Are you fucking serious? Those are obviously some type of little gang members by the way that they moving. I stereotype and I know for a fact. Bro had the murder mark on his shit, bro. 25. All the OGs and all the real street niggas will tell you there's no such thing as OGs nowadays. There's no such thing as no big bro. There's no such thing as, you know what I'm saying? You over me. You know what I'm saying? Because we got 25-year-old niggas killing 17-year-olds, stabbing them, bro. Like a bitch. 17, bro, and 16. What? what? How old were they when they died? 17, 15, 17? Kids, anyway. We got a 25-year-old out here killing kids, bro. Kids. And he think he an OG, bro. And I swear to God, bro, no matter where he at, if he go to jail and he don't get DP for this shit, bro, whatever click he, whatever click he bang, they all some hoes. They all some hoes, nigga. If I'm banging, bro, and I found out one of my soldiers killed a fucking 25-year-old nigga, I will break his fucking neck. What the fuck are we talking about, bro? A kid, bro, and you gonna come up here thinking that you got some stripes, nigga? I'm gonna give you some marks, nigga, but they ain't gonna be no stripes, I promise you. The bro, everybody about to get down on you, bro, and I'm gonna break your shit. Elizabeth, I'm gonna break his arms, I'm gonna break his legs. I'm going to twist that shit until that motherfucking pop, boy. No cap. You don't kill no kid around here. Then thank you, gangster, for that shit. I will twist his arm into that bitch break. Expressed her concern about Bryce, who had a troubling criminal history involving various serious offenses, like domestic violence, physical offenses, kidnapping, and even abusing individuals. The boys assured Elizabeth they'd return soon. And even though days had passed without any sign of them, she didn't worry much. They had a habit of part. See, that's what the fuck I'm saying, bro. Single mothers can't do this shit alone. Y'all bitches keep talking about, I'm independent, I'm independent and proud. I'm independent and proud. This is what the fuck that shit leads to. Days went on without her worrying about her kids, bro. Got me chopped. This new age women shit is bullshit, bro. And then they don't realize their mistake until somebody die. Or until they're about 30 or 35 years old, 40 years old, still saying that shit. Then they finally hit the wall talking about I made a mistake. Bitch, you 40 now. I don't give a fuck about your mistakes. I need somebody younger than me. Partying and sometimes not coming home for days. So she thought it was just another one of those times. However, little did she know, this time would bring devastating news that would change her life forever.
The police wasted no time in tracking down the entire group. They quickly found Anjuan Carter and brought him in for questioning. Meanwhile, they continued their search for Bryce, and by the next day, Tuesday, May 24, 2016, they had located him as well. Another member of the group, Jackery Taylor, was also apprehended on the same day, all within a short span of time. Five Welling, because if you do a good job and you work hard at it, it's very rewarding, and the money is... Bryce and Jack... Y'all mean to tell me this fat ass doughboy is that same ass motherfucker that killed those kids? Oh my god. These wannabe gangsters, man. And I bet you my word for God, he won't step to nobody his age. He won't, he won't step to somebody his age, bro. He won't step to a real man. He won't step to somebody who knows some, some martial arts. He won't step to somebody bigger than him. A real warrior, bro, a real banger, bro, they don't give a fuck what you do, what you bang, what you claim. How we get down is how we get down. You understand? You win something, you lose something, but you win to fight another day. Right. But you win because you get to fight another day. However the saying goes, you win something, you lose something, nigga. Fuck it. I done took L's, nigga, one L. And I dropped that nigga, so no cap, more than my daughter. Well, I'm out here for real, nigga. <laughs> if it comes to that, I'm not, I'm a black man, though. I don't give a fuck about being no nigga. Y'all see this? This is a nigga. This right here, this is a nigga. I'm not, I'm not. I served my country, so you know what I'm saying? I ain't, no. Being a gang banger is far from my fucking, from my scope. But I will step to anybody, bro. I don't give a fuck who you are, what you claim, what you bang. Don't give a fuck. Zachary spent hours in police custody as each were speaking separately with detectives about Larry and Maurice. The detectives tried to make Jackery nervous by showing him crime scene photos of the two brothers, hoping to coax information about the murders. However, all Jackery said was that he was friends with the brothers but had nothing to do with their deaths. On the other hand, Bryce insisted to police that he had no idea where the brothers were and eventually requested a lawyer. When Jackery and Bryce didn't provide any useful information, the police decided to change their approach. During separate interviews with Anwan, they noticed a difference in his demeanor. That's when Anwan finally opened up about what exactly happened on the evening of May 21st. He explained that Bryce had called him and Jackery to his apartment that evening. There Bryce confided in a 25-year-old motherfucker is calling a 17-year-old and a 15-year-old. Where the fuck are y'all parents at, bro? Where the fuck are y'all parents at, man? I'll be damned if my child says he's about to go hang out with a 25-year-old, nigga. Bro, by the time my son is 17, you know how big I'll be, bro? How fast these hands gonna be? The torque and power, bro. I seen dads come into schools and get knocked out by kids. <laughs> you got me all the way fucked up, nigga. All the way. And expressed his suspicion that Larry and Maurice might tell the police about something they had seen on May 4th, 2016, which was Bryce's biggest secret. Bryce managed to persuade Jackery and Anwan to assist him with a plan. A plan that involved something terrible. Killing the brothers. On the night of May 20... Why though, bro? ...and expressed his suspicion that Larry and Maurice might tell the police about something they had seen on May 4th, 2016. Which was Bryce's biggest secret. Bryce managed to persuade Jackery and Anwan to assist him with a plan. A plan that involved something terrible. Killing the bro- So a 25 year old is acting scary because of some shit that he did. Let me tell you something, bro. If you, when you step in, you always step by yourself. Or you step with somebody who you know gonna ride with you and keep sound, right? That's your fault for taking fucking kids 
with you to do anything, dumbass. They're kids, nigga. He's supposed to be a freshman. He's supposed to be a sophomore in high school. You're 25, bro. About to be 30 in five years. And you're hanging out with kids. Where are their parents at? Brothers. On the night of May 21st, Jackery went to their house and convinced the brothers to come out by telling them that Bryce was going to take them to a party. Y'all continue to watch. I'll be back. Larry and Maurice were a bit unsure at first, but eventually they agreed to go along. As they had left the house, they assured their mother Elizabeth that they would be back later that night. The group had driven to Bryce's house, which he shared with his mother, who happened to be out of town that weekend. As the boys settled in, they began hanging out and having a good time, just like any other party. But Larry and Maurice had no idea that there was something sinister brewing behind the scenes. Suddenly out of nowhere, an argument broke out among the group and ruined the fun atmosphere of the party. Anwan told the police that Jackery accused the brothers that they had stolen money from Bryce. When Jackery confronted Maurice about the theft, he became furious. At that moment, Maurice felt threatened and could sense the danger, so he grabbed a knife to save him and his brother, which escalated the whole situation. He made Maurice from his knees, my bed for forgiveness. He tied him up, he tied him up to see Anwan stated that when Maurice pulled out the knife, Bryce quickly stepped in and took it away. Then, they both managed to overpower the brothers and tied them up with belts. They separated Larry from Maurice so that both brothers wouldn't be able to fight back, and left him in the bathroom, while Bryce brought Maurice to his knees in the living room. Maurice pleaded for their lives, but Bryce demanded that he beg for forgiveness. It was a tense moment as Jackery and Anwan watched Maurice too. Anwan stated that when Maurice pulled out the knife, Bryce quickly stepped in and took it away. Then, they both managed to overpower the brothers and tied them up with belts. They separated Larry from Maurice so that both brothers wouldn't be able to fight back, and left him in the bathroom while Bryce brought Maurice to his knees in the living room. Maurice pleaded for their lives, but Bryce demanded that he beg for forgiveness. It was a tense moment as Jackery and Anwan watched Maurice tearfully beg for forgiveness, hoping to save himself and his brother from whatever was about to happen next. He put a, he put a man in his mouth. Bryce's cruelty knew no bounds. After laying a blanket on the floor under Maurice, he had covered his head with stockings and shoved a rag into his mouth. Then, in a shocking act of violence, Bryce began mercilessly beating Maurice and stabbing him over and over again in the chest. I want to chop this nigga's fucking head off. I want to chop his head off. The other teens watching were terrified and shaken by the gruesome and horrific scene unfolding before. And you young niggas take notes, bro. Some of y'all dumb motherfuckers. These niggas is 15 and 17, bro. Following a 25-year-old, bro. They thinking that this 25-year-old got their back. He's an OG. He's a brother. This nigga's out here killing kids, nigga. I don't even know if Cali got any more OGs, for real, for real. I was about to say Cali, but... To be honest, bro, it's going from gangsters just being men, bro. Leaving that shit alone and understanding that nobody in that life has nothing good for you. Fuck being a gangster. Let me walk into being a man. As I walk into a man, ain't no situation I can't handle. You understand? But I'm all about my business. I'm all about protecting my family. I'm all about getting this money. All this gang banging following other niggas, bro, can suck my toes, nigga. Before them. Bryce with his menacing Look at this fat fuck ass motherfucker. I can't tell if he's a Nazi, bro. What the fuck is this shit? Oh, period doughboy looking motherfucker, bro. Look how he looks now without looking all menacing and his eyes still look lost and shit. Like he's just fucking wandering and shit. But 
Bro, what the fuck, man? Somebody like you is out here claiming to be an OG, but you killing kids. Demeanor threatened the boys who are witnessing the horror and pressured Anwan into stabbing Maurice once in the chest. Fearing Bryce's wrath, Anwan reluctantly obeyed his command and stabbed Maurice. And one continued his chilling account and revealed that once Maurice was dead, Bryce forcefully brought Larry out of the bathroom to the living room where his brother's blood was covering the floor. It was a heartbreaking moment for Larry as he realized his brother was now dead. Maurice's lifeless body was moved aside as Bryce turned his attention to Larry. And one vividly remembered Larry. Y'all all because that fat fuck wanted to be a gangster, bro. Where the fuck did he? Where the fuck did he go? Where the fuck did he go? Where the fuck did he go? Larry's painful voice when he pleaded with Bryce to spare him, but it was all in vain. Larry was subjected to the same horrific treatment as his brother. Anwan still heard Larry's desperate pleas before Bryce had stabbed him a shocking 20 times in the chest. Once again, Bryce threatened... I have a perspective. I believe if America would cease and desist all murder music, any music that talks about killing or capping anybody, the crime rates will drop drastically after two to three years. After two to three years. If, um, fuck freedom of speech, fuck all that shit. Fuck you. We need to save our fucking people, bro. This shit is bleeding out to UK, to London, to... Bro, fuck all that, bro. Freedom of speech, my ass. When it comes to the detriment of our country, all right. Fuck it, we're taking it. Because now it's becoming detrimental. Fuck freedom of speech. This nigga is influenced by rappers, gangster music. Y'all saw in the other video, he's fucking holding up a gold watch. He got the necklace. Trying to be some type of rapper or something, bro. What happens when we cease and assist all rap music? That includes murder. That's it. Murder only. Anything that's talking about murder, we... And that has talk about murder, we take it off the airways, bro. It's about time we take this to stand, bro. It's not even a stand. We're not about to march in the streets. We're not about to do none of that shit. H hire a few hackers. To da -da 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 Get all that shit off the airways, bro. Jackery and forced him to stab Larry once. With both Maurice and Larry now dead. Bryce loaded their bodies into the car and called another friend to help dispose of them. As Bryce and his friend drove off with the brothers' lifeless bodies in the back seat, Anwan and Jackery were left behind at the apartment as Bryce instructed them to clean up the gruesome scene. What happens next? And one continued his confession by revealing that Bryce drove their lifeless bodies to an abandoned lot and set them on fire. As the flames engulfed Maurice and Larry, their bodies burned that fateful night. However, by some stroke of luck, their bodies hadn't turned to ashes. After Anwan's interrogation, the police finally uncovered the horrifying truth about how Larry and Maurice met their tragic end. However, there were still lingering questions in their- This nigga look like he's doing a music video, bro. This fat titty fuck. This is heartbreaking. I ain't killing kids, but you supposed to be a gangster, nigga. Real gangsters are Frank Lucas, stupid fuck. Real gangsters are fucking the one who trained Frank Lucas. What's his name? Robin Johnson or some shit like that? Bobby Johnson. Stupid fucks. Bobby Johnson. Frank Lucas. Our generation of gangsters are bitches. I know that for a fact. <laughs> oh, 
I'll get in the story time one day, bro. Once I get, you know what I'm saying? Once I become famous, bro, and start making good money off this shit, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell y'all a story time about the time I got into it with a game banger, nigga. Their minds. What was the brother's connection to Bryce? And what was the secret that led to such a dreadful fate for the city? What, what the hell did you do with them kids that you had to kill them, bro? Come on, man. Siblings. Larry and Maurice were just regular teenagers who enjoyed life. And even though they were stepbrothers, they shared a strong bond. But things took a turn when they met Bryce in 2015, and his cool personality caught their attention right away. Bryce was a rapper, and he had a bunch of music videos. What I tell you? What I tell you? Online that made him seem super successful and rich. Larry and Maurice were impressed by his lifestyle and charisma, and soon found themselves drawn into his world. What I tell you? I'm a beast at this shit. They saw this nigga as like an OG, a brother, bro. Somebody who's looking out for them brothers, but he's not. When they all be How many more of them snakes do we got in the hood just like this nigga? Came close. Bryce introduced anybody from 25 to 30 claiming to be an OG nigga and today's age, nigga, you better watch him. You better watch him. Introduce them to one of his. Uh, ain't no OGs no more. Ain't no DPs no more. This is how you knew gang banging stopped being gang banging. Once a crip lined up with a blood to line, to take out another crip, bro. Nigga, it's it's old. It's nigga. Seventeen. The gang banging is not gang banging no more. I don't know what the fuck it's called no more. Let's call it nigga killings at this point. Because nah, Asians game banging, Mexican game banging too, so I guess game banging is whatever it is, but. What? Year old Jackery Taylor. As the three boys hung out with Bryce more and more, they met a fourth teenager, 14 year old Anwan Carter, who also joined their group in 2015. They all used to spend a lot of time with Bryce as he would drive them around, buy them clothes and food, and even give them money to spend as they pleased. In an interview with the police, Jackery revealed that Bryce used to promise them that they would become famous if they followed in his footsteps. As time went on, the boys seemed to embrace Bryce's gangster lifestyle. That's why y'all never young niggas. Young brother, never listen to a nigga telling you, hey bro, I got some bread for you. Go do this and that. Hey homie, I got some. Hey bro, I got you. Go ahead and handle that for me. Never. Think for yourself as a man, you heard from me? Think for yourself as a man. Especially if you don't got other OGs around him approving him. That nigga was solo dolo. He ain't have no OGs around him approving him. At all. No unks around there. Nobody setting a quote. Nobody. Come on, man. Style more and more. They even appeared in some of his music videos, giving off the impression that they were adopting his mentality. Elizabeth noted a change in their behavior during this period. Their social media accounts started to fill up with pictures of them posing with fake weapons, showing off stacks of cash, and smoking cigars, along with images of women. They also began attending parties regularly and would sometimes stay out for days. On May 4th, 2016, they were returning from one such party late at night, around 12.30 a.m. Maurice was driving Bryce's car with Jackery in the passenger seat and Bryce and Larry in the back, while Anwan was following behind them in the truck. So this is what led to them getting killed. Suddenly, Bryce made Maurice slam on the brakes of his car when he spotted a man walking on the sidewalk of the 800 block of South 41st Street in Louisville, Kentucky. As he strained to remember where he knew him from, it soon clicked that he was Christopher Jones, the 40-year-old man that local gangs were after. But Bryce made a serious mistake. He wrongly identified Christopher, thinking he was someone else, trying to collect the reward placed on his head. It was such a mistake that it changed everything in an instant. In a moment of panic, Bryce quickly pulled out his gun and shot Christopher in the chest from the car window. As Christopher fell down, all the teens were stunned by witnessing a murder in front of their eyes. 
Without even stopping to think, they drove away from there as fast as they could, feeling scared and full of adrenaline. After the shooting, Christopher was rushed to emergency surgery, but sadly, he didn't make it and died during the operation. Anyone with $10,000 or more in credit card debt or personal loans may qualify for help from National Debt Relief. Getting started... Your dumb, fat, doughberry ass. Fat, tire in your stomach having ass. Two titty double Ds having ass. Got no nipples having ass. Long neck turkey having ass. Mean to tell me that your dumb, retarded... Loose in the mind... Whatever the fuck he's thinking, bro. Beaver face looking motherfucker. Weasel face motherfucker. That you were dumb enough to shoot somebody with four kids in the car. Four kids in the car. You were a dumb fuck, bro. You were a dumb fuck. And you wasn't bold enough to, to hold it down, nigga. They're kids, nigga. You still should have been bold enough to be to have that conversation with them and let them know what's going on. Nigga not no OG, bro. Bryce had driven the boys home and warned them not to breathe a word about what happened that night. But over the next two weeks, Larry and Maurice couldn't shake off the horror of what they'd seen. They started avoiding Bryce more and more as they felt uneasy about being around him. Meanwhile, Bryce was feeling anxious too. He worried that the brothers might spill the beans about the shooting to everyone, and he would be in serious trouble. So he made a decision to end their lives on the evening of May 21st, 2016. In a short period, Bryce made a grave decision to take the lives of three people, all to protect himself. But now the consequences of his actions are closing in on him. Following the interrogations, both Jackery and Anwan admitted guilt to three counts of aiding in murder and tampering with evidence. Because they were under 18 years old, they were sentenced to serve 10 years in juvenile detention centers, with the remainder to be served in adult prisons once they turned 18. As part of their agreements, they were also required to testify against Bryce during his trial. Ever since Bryce was arrested, he made a mess of the court hearing. The victim's families thought he did it on purpose. They believed he was trying to cause chaos because he knew the prosecution wanted the death penalty. He thought if he made enough trouble and delayed the process, they might not give him the death penalty. At first, Bryce did something shocking. He spit on his court-appointed attorney because he found out the attorney was friends with the victim's grandfather. This caused a big problem and the attorney had to leave the case due to a conflict of interest. Later, there was even a fight between Bryce and the attorney, and you can see it all in the court footage. Nice cheap shot. You're a coward. Nice cheap shot. You're a coward. You're a coward. <laughs> Bryce even made a threatening statement. I'll see you when I get out. Because of this threat, in future courtroom appearances, Bryce was restrained to his chair and made to wear a spit mask. But even... <laughs> you act like a filthy animal. I treat you like a filthy animal. With these measures, his behavior didn't improve. In one hearing, he even threatened the judge and her family. Bryce's antics in the courtroom didn't stop there. Why this nigga don't got no marks on him, bro? Many times he refused to let his attorney speak for him and claimed that he didn't trust them. He even went through three different state-appointed attorneys because of this. It was like he was determined to do things his own way, no matter what anyone else had said. Whether you agree with me or not, the higher courts will again, so I just want to know, Brett, that I'm doing everything on my part. You know, at a time that's best for you, but if you think this is the best Even though you show favoritism to the Commonwealth, you deny every motion I've ever filed in this courtroom, I'm still going to, it's my right to file a pro se motion, and it's my right to speak what I need to speak on. I don't know if y'all got some type of sexual relationship going on or which I got going on, but I'm definitely going to speak my mind. Detective Catelli, I have yeah. no sexual... This is back in the 80s. They didn't have slavery and all that shit, racial tensions. I wish America never had racial tensions because America should have been the first place to understand for fucking race. Indians were here before them. 
Blacks came here with the Indians at some period of time before Columbus. Columbus wrote it down in his fucking journal. Then Columbus came with his fucking Spanish people. Then, I guess they came with whoever the fuck they came with. Americans came. Asians came with them. I don't know where the fuck Mexicans come from. I think they were in Texas somewhere. And that's the other part of the land. But America should have never been a, a place of racism. And after slavery ended, 30 years after that, that shit, that shit should have been dead. But I say that to say this on that long ass rant. If this was the 50s or the 60s, nigga, with no range of tensions, and I was a judge, I would tell my bailiff to beat the fuck out of this dude. You stab two kids. You burn them. You burn them. And you tried to fucking hide it. They were kids and you're 25 with multiple fucking convictions. I am about to fuck you up. Torn for president. Fuck what he's about to say. He's a bitch.